Hey student, watch this video and learn very important lessons about verb to be in English. Coming up. Hello, my friends. Winter is coming here in Sao Paulo. <laughs> it's cold. I wasn't made for cold weather, but hey, thanks for joining me on another English lesson. If it's your first time here, consider subscribing because from Monday to Friday, in the summer or in the winter, I'm here making lessons for you guys. <laughs> okay, okay, let's dive into the content. Grammar and news. I will try to speak as slowly as possible. <laughs> and hey, participate in the chat because as I told you yesterday, uh, YouTube is a little crazy. It's not really showing me the number of people who are, you know, the number of people who's watching uh, this lesson. So say hello here in the chat. And if you are watching the replay, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope this lesson can help you. Make sure to participate in the comments, share something with me, tell me about the lesson, ask me a question. I appreciate when you guys participate, okay? Now, before I say anything, if you want to download a really nice ebook where I share five strategies to help you better understand and talk to native speakers, there's a link in the description of this video. It's free. And after you register, you will receive this ebook. And every week, a different email with some suggestions and strategies to help you improve your English. Okay? Now, verb to be in the present. This is going to be a more basic lesson. I will work my best to speak slowly and after the video is finished i will i will prepare the subtitles okay right now no subtitles but probably tomorrow the subtitles will be ready for this lesson okay now the first thing i have to show here is uh the conjugation of verb to be in the present okay here in this lesson i will talk about verb to be in the present and in the past in a future video i will focus about verb to be in the future and how you can use verb to be in the future it's not really that complicated but i know that this may help many english students this is an important lesson and even intermediate advanced speakers make mistakes with verb to be a very basic verb that causes a lot of confusion when it shouldn't, okay? So here, why am I showing you the pronouns? The pronouns, I, he, you, no, I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, they are subject pronouns. And in English or in any language, well, most languages I know, <laughs> when you want to make a sentence, you need to have a subject. The subject could be a person, uh, an object, the name of a person, the name of a city. So that's usually a subject. After the subject, for tonight's lesson, I'm going to show you verb to be. And for each pronoun, for each subject, we are going to use a different conjugation of a different form of verb to be. So whenever I'm talking about myself, I, if I need verb to be, I will use am in the negative form am not. And if I need to ask a question, I just invert verb to be and the subject. If I'm asking you a question or if I'm making an affirmative sentence to you about you, I will use the verb to be form are in the negative form aren't. And if I want to ask a question, are you? Are you a subscriber? Come on, subscribe to my channel. <laughs> he she and it, we will use the verb to be form is. The negative is isn't or is not. And if I want to ask a question, invert. Is not. Is he. Is she. Is it. Then we have the plural pronouns we, you again, that can be used in the plural, and they. We are, you are, they are. Negative form, they aren't, you aren't, we aren't, okay? Now, the pronoun they will be used to describe the plural of he, she, and it. He is one boy or one man. They are could be two guys, two men, okay? Two boys, 300 boys, I don't know. She is, Mary, Mary is, she is. Now, Mary and Julia, they are. 
One dog or one table. It. Two tables. They. Okay? So, these pronouns, we, you, they, they represent. And we, you and I. You and I together. We. Right now, we are participating in this live. <laughs> I'm teaching and you are watching. Okay? Uh, someone says, it's hot in here. Well, not here. <laughs> I miss the sun. Oh, well. Now, here are some examples, okay? This is an educational channel. So, why am I going to use verb to be? Verb to be has uh, some uh, very limited uses, okay? You are going to use verb to be in very specific situations. Let's see if I wrote this down. No, I didn't. Hello, Priscilla. Uh, when I am describing the characteristic of something, for example, this channel is an educational channel. So, I'm describing this channel. Maybe I will describe the characteristic of this channel, which in this case is an educational channel. There are channels that are entertaining, you know, for entertainment purposes. There are different kinds of channels. When I describe my physical appearance, I am tall, my hair is brown and short, very short. My eyes are brown. I am slim and that's it. <laughs> uh, I am, I'm just grabbing myself again. I am a practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming, NLP. If you don't know what an NLP is, Google it. Very nice uh, area. This is a video, this is, I'm describing, this is a video about verb to be. My students, I'm talking about you guys, because I have many students here on YouTube. My students are from many different countries, okay? So, there are many people from many different countries here. I have students from China, maybe, I don't know, from Japan, from Nigeria, from France, from Portugal, from Argentina, from Italy, from so many beautiful countries. The world, unfortunately, the world is in crisis. There is a crisis right now in the world. There is a very serious problem. I cannot say the name of the problem because if I do, YouTube will cancel the money I make on this video. I know it's serious, but we can't talk about it. The kids are hungry. I will also use verb to be when connecting with adjectives to describe characteristics. Feelings, I am tired, I'm happy, I'm sad, my brother is happy, my sister's grumpy. I'm describing. So, this is a very common way to use verb to be, to describe something, the state, the condition, or the feeling, or characteristics, okay? My personality, I'm very patient. My best friend is very talkative. Chemistry, I'm describing chemistry. Chemistry is difficult. Difficult. Chemistry, difficult. My family is very big. So, if you pay attention here, what is one mistake that I see very... And now we'll talk more about the mistake uh, in the next slides that are coming. But students sometimes use verb to be and another verb. And this is a very serious problem. If you are using two verbs together, verb to be and another verb, you really need to think what verb do you really need? Okay, there is one possibility for you to use verb to be and another verb, but in most cases, the students are not using the, the phrase in that, with that sense. And I will show you. So, be careful when you put two verbs together. Okay, and I will talk a little bit more about that. So, this is the biggest problem students have. Use verb to be and another verb together. You can't do that. If you see here, all the examples I'm showing you are only being used with verb to be. Whenever I am describing characteristics or appearance, feelings, or giving qualities to something, I will not need another verb, okay? You can make more complex constructions, but that's not the case for tonight. So, here, negative, I am not. You will need the word not. You can abbreviate, you can contract, 
But if you don't want to, don't do it, okay? Now, in, in, in spoken language, native speakers usually contract. I am not a patient person. Oh, well, sometimes. My sister is not an engineer. She is... She is... I have no idea what my sister is. <laughs> she works with business. I, I don't know what she does. I need to ask her. Uh, yeah, I don't know. My friends are not fluent English speakers. Tell me, are your friends uh, fluent English speakers? Let me know. Pricks is not my real name. Da -da -da -da. My real name is Consuela. Muchacha. <laughs> no, my real name is Priscilla. <laughs> Damn it, I'm not Consuelo. Consuelo is such... <laughs> Consuelo is such a cool name. Consuelo Hernandez. <laughs> my name is just Priscilla. <laughs> but I like Priscilla. Is there any Consuelo? I like the power of Consuelo. Consuelo. <laughs> That's so stupid. All right. Are you from Brazil? I'm asking you a question. So I invert verb to be and the subject. In this case, the subject is the pronoun you. But remember, the subject can be another word. It could be a name. It could be an object. It could be a city. Okay. Is, um, is Sao Paulo... In the United States. No, Priscilla, São Paulo is in Brazil. Hello, sweetie, geography. Okay, what is your favorite color? So here, what is your favorite color? I don't know. So these questions with W8, what? What's your address? What is your email address? Who is your best friend? Who's your favorite teacher on YouTube? Just saying. <laughs> It's okay, you probably have a favorite teacher. It's okay if it's not me. I'm lying. <laughs> Are your parents fluente? You know, my word, uh, my uh, my Microsoft Office word, I, I don't know, is always correcting my, my sentences. I really try to put it in English, but it always goes back to Portuguese. Hello, Bill Gates, can you help me out here? Because I always switch to English and you always bring it back to Portuguese. Dude, you're making my life difficult. <laughs> Is your best friend fun? Is your best friend fun? So you see, whenever I want to ask a question, I invert. Or if here I have who, what, when, I will use is, when is, what is, where is, okay, whose is, okay? Um, excellent. Moving on. Now, I will... Let's see if I can go to the past, uh, the common mistakes here. Mm, okay. No, I can't. I have to, to keep it up. Now, what I showed you here is uh, the verb in the present. Before I talk about the, the past and uh, the common mistakes in the past, I forgot to make a slide just to talk about the mistake in the present. Because to be very honest, the same mistake students make in the present is the same mistake students make in the past. The mistake students usually make is to write a verb to be and another verb. For example, I am like, I'm do, I'm go, I'm watch, I'm need, or he's like, he's go, he is study. And you cannot do that, okay? So, what I tell my basic students when I am teaching them about verb to be and when I start teaching them about simple present is. In this moment, I like the translation, okay? When I, as you and remember, I don't teach with translation, but for this specific lesson, I ask my students, think, think, what do you need? Do you need the verb eat, yum, 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 eat, or do you need verb to be? Think. I am eat. No, I eat. I am Priscilla. I am a teacher. I am very nice. But I eat. I like. 
I go. So in this case, in the beginning, if you are having many problems with verb to be, start thinking when you're writing or when you are making sentences, when you are trying to make some oral sentences, what do I need? Because verb to be and the other verbs, they cannot stay together. You cannot put them together. You can if you use present continuous. I am watching. I am listening. I am reading. But this tense, present continuous, is not so common. We don't use all the time. We use it. It is important. But we don't use it all the time. Therefore, most of the time when students make this mistake, it's not because of present continuous. It is not. It's because when they learn verb to be, they learned like this. I am, you are, he is, she is, it is, we are, you are, they are. By the time they start to learn simple present and they learn other verbs, they continue to think about I am, go. You are listen, she is do, he is like, we are need. Because they connect verb to be and they pronounce together. Because every time they study at verb to be, they always combined the two things, the pronoun, the subject, and verb to be. So for you to fix this mistake, I really recommend you to think Take some time, okay? We need to analyze this kind of mistake and build the correction, change the, the, the circuits in the brain. I am like or I like? She is do or she does? We are go or we go? And this is small change in your practice will help. Whenever I'm having a private student and he's using... He's making a phrase, he's talking to me, and he says, Ah, teacher, I'm go. I am or I go? What do you need? Ah, teacher, it's go. Okay, so thinking about this, analyzing what you're saying is important. This will help you more than just doing exercises in English, okay? Than doing just grammar exercises, okay? Now, moving on, now we can talk about the past. Verb to be in the past, we have two, ay, my, my legs hurting, we have two, actually all my body is frozen, <laughs> it's, it's cold, my hands right now, my nose is super cold, okay, anyway, I'm fine, really fine, in the simple past, verb to be has two forms, was or were, okay, the negative form is wasn't, or weren't, okay? Ah, uh, teacher, can I say was not? Yes, you can. You can say was not or right, was not, or you can say were not or were, weren't. <laughs> now, why do I have two forms, was and weren't? Again, you will use was or you will use were based on the subject. Here I have the pronouns to help you. I was. So if I use verb to be in the past with the pronoun I, talking about myself, I was, or I wasn't, or was I, if it's a question. You, if I ask you a question, or if I make an affirmative sentence about you, you were, okay? Negative, you weren't. Question, were you, okay? He, she, it was. And here, if I'm talking about the table, my table was dirty. So, I cleaned it. My table was. My doctor was very nice to me this morning. Yeah, he called me to check on me. No, I don't have a doctor. <laughs> no, I don't have a doctor. We were you were, they were. So, remember, they can represent many things in the plural. The, 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 it's the plural form of he, she, it. So, the doctors were, the teachers were, the students were, okay? Now, some examples here. My last weekend was great. I didn't do anything. 
I stayed home. I cooked. I ate. Then I ate again. Then I slept again. And that's it. That was my weekend. And here, I have the same idea of verb to be in the present. I'm describing something. I'm giving a characteristic to something. So, my weekend. Great. So, it's I'm describing how my weekend was. My weekend was great. My last weekend was great. My parents weren't home yesterday. They were not there. I called. I called my parents. I hello, hello, mom, dad. They weren't home. Oh, well. Alex wasn't happy to see me. So, feelings. It's very common to use verb to be with feelings. Adjectives that describe feelings, okay? And hey, if you want to make me feel happy, hit the like button. And if possible, share this lesson with your friends. Uh, I believe that verb to be is, is an important lesson. There's no mystery with verb to be. And when you share this lesson, you help the channel grow. You help other people find this information. And you help YouTube understand that Teacher Pricks is nice. <laughs> I was late for work this morning, okay? Simple past, this morning. This morning is over for me. Now it's nighttime, okay? Alex was born on August 10th. I was born on September 13th. Yeah. When was your birthday? Okay, maybe uh, you said, oh, yes, it was my birthday. Oh, really? When was your birthday? So I can ask in the simple past, okay? When, where were you born? I was born in the countryside of Sao Paulo. Where were you this morning? Hmm. I was home. Okay? So, these are some examples. Look at them that are affirmative. There is a negative example. I believe that if you want to improve verb to be and understand verb to be, try to create some examples. But don't just write uh, a phrase saying, John was hungry. Susie is tired. Who is Susie, for God's sake? Who is Alex? Who is Jamie? Write about yourself, okay? I was tired this morning. Oh, why? Then I can continue and explain. I was tired this morning because I didn't sleep well. Okay? I was not feeling so well. So, this is a good way to, to practice examples. By describing things about you about your life, about your day, about the people you know, about your friends, about your family members. That's a much better way for you to create examples. Because what happens to your brain is, whenever you create an example connected to a memory, your brain will connect this new information faster. Because it'll make an association with a memory that you have. So, when I talk about my parents, or when I talk about my best friend, or when I talk about my sister, or when I talk about work, and these examples are real, it's much easier and faster for the brain to receive this information and accept this information and make you remember it. That's why creating crazy examples that don't mean anything to you, will not help you, okay? Now, here are some common mistakes. Um, let me see one thing. Ah, yes, here, ah, yes, here's the slide. <laughs> it's low. Okay, let's talk about uh, this one. Many students use verb to be with the idea of to go. Go and verb to be are different. When do I use go? Go indicates movement in the direction of a place, toward a place. Verb to be doesn't. Uh, verb to be indicates location, here. But it doesn't indicate the movement to get here, okay? So, this is a very important difference. So, for example, many times I ask my students, hey, where did you go? Movement. Go from one place to another. So, you were in your house. Where did you go last night? Some students will say, I was to a dance club. You can't because first we have the preposition to here. And I, I cannot do this. I was to. You don't. You don't do that. You have to use verb go. Second, you don't indicate this movement of uh, 
getting out of one place and going to another, either driving or walking in the direction of another place, from one place to another. Verb to be just shows you are there at that specific moment in time, but it doesn't show the movement that was necessary for you to get there, okay? So, when I ask you where did you go, and you say when you use go, you indicate this movement that you had to go from one place to another place. And in 99% of the cases, you will use preposition to after go. I go to, I went to, I will go to, I'm going to. And with verb to be, you do not use that. Okay, were you born in Sao Paulo? I was not born in Sao Paulo. I was born in the countryside of Sao Paulo, a small city called Jacareí. J A C A R E I. <laughs> so, this is a common mistake you shouldn't make. Be careful what you're trying to say. Now, here, as I said, uh, with verb to be in the present, is to put two verbs together, okay? Uh, in the present or in the past. Ah, I did the exercise. I am the exercise or I did the exercise. So, the verb do and the verb am, verb to be, have different translations. That's why I ask you think. Do you need to be to indicate a quality, a state, or do you need a different action like drinking or sleeping or doing exercises? So think, okay? Many times we put things on autopilot and we just accept this as a norm, as something you can do. So many students will say, I'm like to study when you should say, I like, because I am, am is a different verb. It's just as if I say, I cook go. I cook go. Or you cook or you go. Okay. Um, why do I see if I were, not if I was? This is a different thing. When you're using conditionals, it is allowed. To, actually, you have to say if I were. But it's conditional. Watch my lessons about conditional. This is not the lesson for that. Uh, are you go out every week? Again, the same mistake here. You are making a question. I can ask questions with verb to be, but what's the difference? If I use verb to be, I don't use another verb in the present. So here, do I need the verb to be or do I need go? Okay, so think or go out in this case. So analyze this and think what is the necessary verb here? Are or go out? Are you every week? Are you what? Are you hungry every week? Are you tired every week? So, you see, in many cases, verb to be will ask you for a characteristic, for an adjective, while here, go out, it's, it's, um, it's enough to ask the question. So, here, it's really a moment to reflect and think about, okay, what do I really need? Okay, guys? Uh, oh, yes, I have an exercise. Here, I have an exercise for you guys. I want you to complete this story. Put in the comments your answers, okay? You can pause the video right now. Read the story below. And then you have to think if it's in the present or in the past. Is, am, are, negative, I don't know. And then post your answers in the comments. And I will make sure to reply to you. And uh, maybe in a few hours, I'll post the correct answers for you guys, okay? So, this is the text. I think I'll put the text, I will post the, this story in the comments for you guys to complete, okay? Now I'm moving to the next slide, so if you don't want to pause, I'm going, okay? Anyway, my friends, I ask you to share this lesson with your friends. Other than that, I will see you tomorrow. You don't say I'm like to study, you say I like to study. Watch the lesson again, Rodrigo. Thank you so much, my friends, and I'll see you tomorrow for another English lesson. Bye-bye!